Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Omni Viewer, but you can't see me right now because you're looking at a book instead. I just got the art and the making of Kong Skull Island, and I wanted to flip through it quickly to see if it's, you know, worth checking out. I mean, this isn't one of those times where you just necessarily say, oh, if you're a fan, you want to see it. I mean, come on, let's have a little bit more insight. Now, I love these kind of things. Concept art books, making of the movie books, one of my favorite subjects. I just think it's so fascinating to see what could have been in the movie, or how they got to what we eventually did see in the movie. One of my favorite subjects. Great fusion of art and behind the scenes. Well, you probably would be fascinated by it too, I'm guessing, if you're a cinephile. So, just before we even open it, I have to say, like, it feels almost that less effort went into making this book look interesting on the outset than other such books. I mean, I know you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but I mean, compare it to the other two art of the movie books that were produced by Legendary for their monster movies. See, here we've got Pacific Rim. Man, Monsters, and Machines. We have Godzilla, The Art of Destruction. Then we have The Art and the Making of Kong Skull Island. I mean, there's not much to that title at all, really. And the cover, too, like, the only color that isn't some shade of gray is that cr cloud of green smoke. And everything else is just so dark. Kong's face is supposed to be up here. You can barely see it. And it's hard enough to see already, but this little guy in the title are the only things that are glossy. If I tilt it a little, I'm sure you can tell there's a slightly different texture to them. Because they're glossy and the rest of this is flat. So, other than the giant skull he's standing on, you know... Not much to see in ways of actual Kong. Compare that again. Godzilla's easy to see on this one, and it's very stark contrast of red and black with a dramatic image. Or Pacific Rim, very bright and colorful. You can clearly see Gypsy Danger. You can clearly see Otachi. But hey, like I said, not supposed to judge a book by its cover. Although, since we're still on the subject, remove the dust jacket, and you'll see... Not only that the actual cover of the book has the Iwi uh, hieroglyphics, the Iwis being the name of the natives on Skull Island in this movie, but the inside of the dust jacket itself also has this interesting image. My arm's in the way, sorry. See that? Yeah, that's pretty neat. I can appreciate that. Okay, so... Also, inside of the flaps themselves are storyboard images. At least I think they're storyboard images. They're arranged in that way, clearly showing progression of movement. And they're in black and white, they're all pencil. But again, nice little touch. Pretty much every possible inch of this book is somehow covered with art in one way or another. Let me just zoom out quickly. That way we can actually see the rest of it as the book is opened. So, what's inside here? Well, a lot of stuff. Like it said, it's the art and making of. So you've got production images in addition to the concept art. And there's some pretty interesting things in here. Like, we have the gray fox, as you can see, early concepts of that, of the Iwis themselves, which I'm sure they put a lot of effort into that because of certain accusations often leveled at King Kong, but that's a topic for another day. Ah, this is something that does kind of confuse me just a little bit, because, again, bringing it back to those other two books, um, the Pacific Rim book and the Godzilla book had certain goodies with them, like extra little things in addition to the artwork. In the back of each book, they had these little flap areas here, these little pouches, 
that had posters. Godzilla had a movie poster. Um, I'm not gonna bother unfolding it necessarily because we're not talking about that. Pacific Rim actually had two posters. Both of them, not neither of them movie posters, but both of them in-universe Jaeger program posters. Which, you know, that's the sort of thing the fanboy in me just loves. But what about Kong Skull Island? Does it have a poster? I don't know. There's this portion that I'm open to right here. This whole thing is a fold-out. And it's clearly not a page in the book. And it's attached even differently. And it's different from this fold-out section. Where is it? Here we go. This fold-out section, which folds out like that and clearly is part of the book. So, what's confusing me about this part? Well, like I said, it folds out. It should be a poster, double-sided even. But I cannot for the life of me figure out how it's supposed to be removed, if it's supposed to be removed. I mean, it could very well be that it's just a part of the book they couldn't fit any other way, and I don't want to remove it lest I damage the thing. So maybe I'll update you on if I ever figure it out, but for now I'm just assuming it's not supposed to come out. So yeah, other interesting things. Obviously we have art for the skull crawlers, and it's interesting with the creatures in particular, just what exactly they uh, went into the process. Because with, like with Kong, where is it? With Kong, uh, you get the idea that they always kind of knew up front that they were going to go for something more humanoid, and the idea was just to figure out the finer details. With the rest of the creatures, you get the sense that they did a lot more experimenting, a lot more trying to figure out, like, see here, very different uh, Skull Island spider creature than what we got in the film, or with the birds or stuff. So, and then you get to the skull crawlers, wherever they are, they're further back. And again, you also see that they always kind of went with the idea that they'd be reptilian, and they probably have only the two legs, like that creature in the first movie. But, you know, then you figure out the finer details. So, yeah. Pretty interesting to find out either way. And interestingly enough, I won't go too far into this part, because I don't want to ruin any surprises, but... There is a section, the very last section of the book is unused scenes. Basically, deleted scenes in book form, like stuff that just didn't make it into the movie for one reason or another. You don't normally see that in these kind of books, usually only like in a retrospective, going way, way back kind of thing for ideas that just never got used. They usually stick to stuff that was more along the track they always wanted to go. So, yeah. That's a basic look at Kong Skull Island, the art and making of. Is it worth it? Well, if you're a fan of concept art and giant monsters such as myself, then I would say it's probably a good addition to your collection. If you're more of a casual fan, it's quite a pricey book for just a bunch of pictures, even if they are neat to look at. I guess that's ultimately your choice. I'd say it's definitely more for hardcore fans than casual fans or people who just aren't interested. But, yeah, there you have it. Kong Skull Island, art and making of. I guess the rest is up to you, whether or not you want to know more. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omni Viewer signing off.